Okay, so the Burton LMR. This is one of the most recent and likely one of the last new weapons that DICE will add into Battlefield 1. Coming in as a support class weapon with the option to fire incendiary rounds, this weapon is focused on both infantry on the ground and planes above in the sky. But is it just a little bit too good? And do DICE really care about balance at this point? I think it's pretty clear this weapon is a last hurrah for Battlefield 1. In a previous video, I explained to you how you can easily unlock both of the new Burton LMR variants, the Trench and the Optical. You can watch that video here if you missed it or you need help. But it's the time I spent with the weapon after unlocking it that really got me thinking about the way that it's balanced. It's a fairly unique weapon in its design in real life and DICE, to their credit, has done a really good job at reflecting as many of those attributes as possible here in Battlefield 1. Midway through World War I, 1917 time, many testings were conducted around automatic weapons being affixed to aeroplanes in the sky. These would be used by spotters in a secondary seat to shoot at other planes and ground targets. Now the Burton LMR was designed with its own round, the 345 WSL, and two top mounted box magazines sticking out of the weapon at diagonals. These held 20 rounds each and needed to be locked into position before firing, but only one magazine could be locked at any one time. So after 20 rounds had been fired, the empty magazine would be unlocked and pulled up and the other one pushed down and locked into place. This is represented in Battlefield 1, but in a slightly different way. Instead of both magazines holding one type of ammunition at any one time, one magazine holds 20 rounds of standard ammo and the other holds 20 rounds of incendiary ammunition. If you want to fire incendiary, that unlocking and relocking animation plays when you hit the select fire button, switching the magazine that's being fired from. And quite helpfully, you don't have to worry about two different ammunition counts either, both the incendiary and standard ammunition are lumped together in one ammo pool. With the incendiary ammunition, you are of course able to fire at planes, you can fire at the airships, you can fire at boats as well, and infantry, and that is quite effective, but at the time during World War I, it wasn't accepted, it wasn't ethical for incendiary ammo to be used against other infantry on the ground. Observation balloons and zeppelins, they were okay to shoot at. The Burton, as I mentioned, has standard rounds as well, non-incendiary ones, which would have been loaded into magazines should the weapon need to be used on the ground. The reason the Burton LMR was given the ability to fire incendiary rounds, I've already alluded to this, was to take down enemy observation balloons. These were filled with helium, so they'd float high above the battle below, and the incendiary rounds, when they made contact with the balloon, would ignite the helium and explode the balloon, potentially causing reconnaissance loss to the enemy side. However, the Burton also featured a bayonet lug and a shoulder stock, both of which would not be needed up in the sky. These were ground use additions, allowing a soldier to use the weapon in the trenches if needed. The LMR in the name stands for Light Machine Rifle, which is a very accurate designation for the Burton. It holds many attributes of a machine gun, but also features many attributes of an assault rifle, so it's like a hybrid between the two. Unfortunately, the Burton LMR never progressed beyond prototype stage. At the same time its testing was taking place, many other light machine guns were also being fitted to aeroplanes, which were found to be far more effective for spotters. Vickers machine guns became compatible with incendiary ammo, the Burton was almost relying on that as its unique selling point, and this caused the Burton to almost be lost to history. Just one model of it remains, and that may have been the only model that ever existed. So that gives you a little bit of background about the Burton, and in the title, I've said this weapon could be overpowered in Battlefield 1, and I stand by that statement, but it's important that we look at the weapon statistics at this point, so I can start to show you just how insanely good this weapon could be in its given scenario. 
By comparison, the Burton LMR is actually weaker than a lot of the other support class weapons when it comes to damage output. The maximum damage is just 23 at close range, out to 25 meters, where it sharply drops off to a minimum damage of 17.5 at 37 meters. This means the Burton is between a 5 and 6 bullet kill unless you can pop a headshot in there. If you compare that to the Shoshar for example, that has a max damage of 38 and on paper the Burton looks far off the pace. Where it makes up for this however is in the rate of fire. That sits at 830 rounds a minute, mentally, mentally fast. You can empty one of those 20 round magazines in not much longer than a second or so and that means you will be reloading a lot but these low damage rounds are flying out of the barrel extremely quickly and that's where the Burton really picks up some steam. Now bullet velocity, that sits at 520 meters a second, a little bit on the slow side but in close to medium range engagements this stat shouldn't really come into play all that much. Outside of 50 meters or so you will have to start leading targets and that rate of fire being a little bit harder to manage at range will send a lot of your bullets flying off target. The recoil stats on the Burton make for some extremely good reading. The trench variant comes in with a 0.36 degrees vertical and 0.27 degrees horizontal and the optical variant has that same vertical value but trumps the trench with a 0.238 horizontal value. This at close to medium range makes the Burton extremely easy to control and honestly to me it feels a little bit like the Automatico from the Assault class, maybe a little bit like the SMG-08 when it comes to rate of fire. The Burton is almost the support class's answer to the Automatico. But when you look at some of the damage stats of the SMGs in the Assault class, the Burton is actually trumped by a lot of them leaving that 830 round per minute rate of fire to mop up enemies at close range. Simply being able to spew out bullets faster than anyone else appears to be one of the best traits of the Burton LMR. When you're comparing it to other fast firing support weapons however, like the MG14 Parabellum, it certainly looks like this Burton is primed to be exploited. Its recoil values are significantly easier to control which could lead to some rather sketchy moments in matches where you're pulling off kills with an extremely high rate of fire weapon which acts kind of like a laser beam at mid range. The Burton is hindered very slightly with a 25 times first shot recoil multiplier making it kick hard when you first start using it and making it harder to keep under control if you choose to use the weapon in short bursts. Essentially on paper you're better off firing continuously until you've finished off someone at mid range than you would be bursting. But that doesn't really translate very well into proper gameplay because I found bursting the rifle at range did actually produce some fairly good results. Are you starting to see why I think this might be a little bit overpowered? Another really beneficial trait of the Burton is incendiary ammo. I spoke about that earlier and how you can switch to it in Battlefield 1. DICE has thought of some of the potential issues here. First, no, you can't light people up and turn them into human torches. You still only need to walk past a flame ember on Amiens for that to happen. Secondly, it does less damage to infantry than the standard ammunition. You're going to be doing a max damage of 18 and a minimum damage of just 14.9. However, against vehicles and specifically planes and the airship, the incendiary rounds are just incredible. You're going to be cutting out engines, destroying wings and disabling planes a hell of a lot more using the Burton than likely any other infantry weapon that you can pick in Battlefield 1. Of course, an AA cannon is still the best option to take down a plane but the Burton offers significantly more power on the move to an infantry player. And yes, despite the unethical view at the time of using incendiary ammo on fellow humans during World War 1, you can shoot at any player you like here in Battlefield 1 and of course you will do damage against enemies using incendiary ammo. You're just going to be doing less damage than using the standard ammo. 
When it comes to reloading, you've got some good and some bad points here with the Burton. Just 20 rounds in a magazine firing at 830 rounds a minute means those bullets will be gone very, very fast. But you do have the option to switch over to a second magazine and use the incendiary ammo if you want to, which is a quicker animation than actually reloading a magazine. A short reload comes in at 2.8 seconds and a long reload at 3.2. That's exactly the same as the BAR M1918, which I'd argue has very similar statistics here and kind of bridges the gap again between Assault's SMGs and the Support Class LMGs. However, if you do choose to switch magazines and fire the incendiary ammo, not only do you need to be aware that you're going to be doing less damage against infantry, so a few more rounds might be needed to finish that player off, but once you're out in that second magazine, it's going to take you quite a long time before the weapon is ready to be used again, as you need to reload both magazines on the Burton. So make sure you've got a reliable sidearm on you in case you need to switch to it. Overall, taking everything into consideration, I'm going to say the Burton LMR is not overpowered, but it does have a lot going for it. It really is a hybrid between the Support Class LMGs and the Assault Class SMGs. It takes the best traits from both sets of weapons and combines them into a very attractive option that you can use when being aggressive and attacking enemy positions. The relatively low recoil values and extremely fast rate of fire, combined with greater potential at range than the SMGs and the bayonet attachment to get you out of trouble, makes it an extremely versatile option for almost any player of Battlefield 1. Backed up by unlimited ammo via the support class's gadgets and the ability to turn into a walking AA cannon with that incendiary ammo, the Burton LMR certainly pushes itself right to the top of the pecking order for me at the moment in this game. I've seen a lot of people saying this weapon is too good, which is why I titled the video the way that I did, so that I could analyse it and see for myself. Maybe they think that it is but I don't think DICE really cares anymore. This was a last hurrah for Battlefield 1. They've delivered a weapon that a lot of the community wanted for a long, long time, and now they're moving on to Battlefield 5, which is a totally different game. The Burton is a prime example of how DICE decided to balance weapons and implement gunplay into Battlefield 1, and I think they just decided to throw in an almost overpowered weapon right at the end so everyone can have some fun before Battlefield 5 takes over as the main game in the franchise. So there you are then, the Burton LMR. Thank you very much for watching today. Let me know what you think of the Burton down below in the comments section. Do you think it's overpowered? Do you think it's really fun? Or have you not even tried it yet? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos on Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.